Well, good morning. Welcome to Concord Baptist Church. Amen. This Sunday morning. But uh, anyway, it's good to be here, I think. Well, yeah, I'm just a little frustrated with life. It's going to be okay. Yeah, I get over it. Wait till I get up there, then you'll really get frustrated. Man, you pray for people, pray for people, hope things turn and change, and they don't. Right back where they were. It's uh, it's pathetic, but that's the world today. We were talking about it on the way here. Well, we were basically arguing about it on the way here. Uh Stupid people. They think I'm the only one that's smart. I said, well, I am. I do have a lot of common sense, old school common sense. Amen. Uh, anyway, and if you say anything critical, you're being mean or you're a bad person. When what you're trying to do is instruct so that they don't make bigger mistakes down the road, you know, because sometimes when you're not listening well, you know, it could cost somebody their life. Oh, yes. Especially in the business we're in. Yeah. That's why I didn't want the guys wearing ear pods while they're working because you'd yell to them and they, uh, I think, uh, who was it that was worth Max and uh, Zach? And you'd say something, they don't hear you, and then you see they got them in there. What if something was falling or something's about to slip, you know? Man, do away with them now. What if I had them in my ears when I let the bulldozer down on Jasmine's foot? I'd have never heard that shriek. <laughs> Yell louder. When I was teaching them, they let them, they let them wear them in class while you're trying to teach them. Some kids learn that way. Right. Okay. It's uh, pathetic, but you know, that's the world today. I, I posted a couple of things on Facebook this morning about the 10 planks of communism, Marxism, amen, and the uh, rules for radicals, amen. And if you look at it and read some of it, that's exactly what's playing out today in America, amen. And people are so dumb. They're just so dumb. They just don't realize what's going on. And they they don't realize they're being used as pawns and uh, the race card and everything. So, But one day when it all comes down and they're slaves and they don't even know it and they're slaves again. I'm talking about I don't care what color you are. We're going to be a slave to the government. Amen. Take away your property rights. You. It used to aggravate me years ago. You owned a piece of property. You couldn't do what you wanted on it. You had to get permission for this, permission for that. And, you know, people, most people are sheep. They're dumb. <laughs> and they just follow along, you know, one bite after another till they eat all the grass and nibble it down to nothing. <laughs> Amen. Just like a bunch of sheep. Can't think for themselves or anything else. It gets very frustrating. But, hey, one day the Lord's going to come back and straighten this whole stinking mess out. Amen. Thank God for that. Brother Dave, if you'd be so kind. Amen. Well, Lord, my God, let's say, well, Lord, again, we do thank you for this day, Lord God. We do thank you for it being the Lord's day all day, Lord. And Father, it's a beautiful day outside, Lord, and it's going to be a good day in the, in the house of the Lord. And Father, we do uh, pray, Lord, that... Uh, ones that are still coming, Lord, that uh, you give them traveling mercies, get them here safe, Lord. There's a lot going on out, out there, and people are not paying attention, and this, that, and the other, Lord, and the highways are are, are a danger, and yeah, you amen. get on them, Lord. And Father, I, I pray you put a hedge of protection about them, get them here safe, Lord. And we pray for all the ones in our church and the ones that we pray for all the time that have uh, illnesses and afflictions, Lord God, that... Uh, you put your healing hand on them, that you, you heal them, Lord God, that, Father, that you put a great, mighty miracle in our lives, Lord God, that uh, 
to raise us up, get us healthy, keep us that way, Lord, until you're coming, Lord God. Father, we're looking to hear from you today from the Sunday school class and the preaching hour, Lord, that, Father, you'll give us what you'd have us to have, Lord, that uh, all the people that are speaking today, Lord God, that they're read up, prayed up, studied up, Lord God, that, Father, that they're ready to, to give your people what you'd have us to have, and we'll give you all the praise, honor, and the glory. Thank you and praise in the Lord Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 Well, I read on the news this morning where uh, another rapper died. You ought to see some of the comments that people put below it. That he was in the hospital. He had no home. They were trying to raise money for him to get a, another place. Other rappers were weeping, but he died. And uh, some people can be really cruel, but true. But I've noticed a lot of young people in the entertainment industry have died lately. A lot of them. You know, in this generation, what the what's the Bible say about cursing your father and your mother and all? What do you say about people not living out half their days? Amen. And you know what? These rappers don't have they don't have any uh, what would you call oh any brains really? I mean, they, there's nothing good about what they do. I was waiting on Jasmine last night uh, while she was at the dance. And, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. It was the bowling alley. And uh, <laughs> and I was flipping through uh, the radio station, uh, XM, and it flipped over to a rap. And the first couple words out of their mouth, nothing but cursing. They're immoral. They've got no talent. That's the word I'm looking for. They really have no talent. All they know how to do is cuss and rhyme cuss words and filth. Amen. And it wouldn't hurt my feelings if they all were gone. They've ruined this generation. But what bothers me is you have young people sitting in independent Baptist churches that listen to the same garbage. Exactly. Just mentally ill. Amen. And we wonder why they're like that. Well, that's one of the planks of communism, too, is to dumb down your young people it's working and it's worked it ain't working it's worked <laughs> amen they've dumbed them down half of them can't make change at a cash register you know if your bill's 3156 and you give them uh 30 uh if you give them the 156 instead of 32 and they don't know how to wait a minute i got to put this in <laughs> you know what I mean? and they can't figure nothing out without a calculator amen and it's a sad state that America's in, but look at the parents. You know, they're talking about the young man, the 13-year-old that was shot in Chicago. What's he doing out on the street with a 21-year-old hood at 2.30 in the morning? Carrying, Where's the parents? Carrying guns. Carrying a gun. Where are the parents now? That, oh, he was such a good boy. No, he wasn't. He was a stinking hoodlum. I mean, it's just crazy. And these parents are just as dumb. And you know, it might be that they're prostituting their children to get lawsuits so they can get money. Yeah, I let my son go out here and get shot so I can get, collect some money off of them. And you know what? These other things that aggravate me. <laughs> George Floyd. Get it out there, brother. George Floyd is a stinking thief, a drug addict, and a counterfeiter. They make a hero out of him. How about the one down in Missouri, Brown? He's in there stealing from the guy, roughing people up, and reach for a cop, and they make a hero out of him. Where are the people that are going to stand up and say something about it? Not even our politicians. Maxine Walters said at a rally last night that they need to keep getting up and getting in the face and doing it. I mean, why don't they have her for insurrection? Bring her up on charges. Amen. You know, that's the stupidest woman I ever saw. Imagine what kind of constituents she has. <laughs> and ugly, too. Yeah, and ugly. Yeah, I mean, ugly and no brains. Amen. At least if you're good looking and, got, and have no brains, I mean, at least you got a chance. But imagine what, her, what kind of constituents she has that would vote for that idiot. They do. More idiots like her. 
I'll tell you what. It's frustrating when you look at it and look at what's running our country. But where are we at? Why are we letting them do it? Hey, I got what I want. I don't need to worry about anybody else. I got grandchildren coming up. I hate to see them come up in this world the way it is. Amen. Amen. But then again, some of these young people, they look at the, the parents, the, the professing parents, uh, the professing Christian parents. They're out getting drunk and locked up, DUI and everything else. And you wonder why, why don't they get saved? We've failed. We've failed. All right. Well, music soothes the savage beast. What are we singing? Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. <laughs> what number is that? 483. You got sniffles? Oh, how I love Jesus. You got sniffles? Yeah. Oh, what is uh, 483? All right, let's stand and sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. Amen. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right. A one and a two that gives an intro. There is We'll do it. You want to do it now or in a second? We'll do it at 11 o'clock. Go ahead, Butterball. Yeah, hey, I'm here. Woohoo! Good morning, Concord Independent Baptist Church. 
My name is Dale Simpson, and I am absolutely honored to be here before you this morning. And it is a beautiful morning. And that would be Concord Independent Baptist Church .com. And for those on Face Schnook, it is Frank Townsend, T O W N S E N D. And uh, I don't get on Facebook, so I guess it's pretty easy to find. That would be in Lexington, South Carolina. Uh, I'm getting comments back there. What? Uh, special thanks to a brother Phil back there. He got me the Fox's Book of Martyrs, 1928 copyright, which uh, right now it seems like the older the copyright, the, the more authenticated your reading is uh, because there is so many false printings of books and manipulations. All we have to do is look over at our biohazard shelf over here to see how they have tarnished the Holy Bible in different forms. But uh, this morning, I am once again on the 14 points of sound doctrine, and I have been given the task of redemption. And boy, <laughs> Did I open up a can of worms there uh, in a good way, in a good way. It was uh, refreshing. I kept digging and it kept getting bigger and bigger. So uh, let's hope I can share that with you this morning. We'll start by opening up with a quick word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks this morning for allowing us all to come together here safely this morning to worship with you in our little sanctuary away from the toils and the troubles of the rest of the world. And Lord, I ask that you forgive me for anything that I may have done that is not pleasing in your sight. And Lord, I ask also you to look down on my prayer list with mercy and compassion and solace. It is long and seems to get longer every day. And Lord, we just uh, ask you also have mercy and compassion for those children that are being abused and, and having all means of torture and and evils predicated upon them. And Lord, we, we ask that you uh, you bring justice to to those that perpetrate these these ills. And Lord, I also ask you give me the wisdom and the and the verbal clarity to convey a message here in Sunday school this morning that would be both insightful and informative. And Lord, I especially give thanks for what I don't deserve, which is the grace that you you give us through your son and our savior jesus christ and these words i ask amen uh we go start today to i have a my mother gave this to me but it is a random house dictionary i think i've made reference to it before random house college dictionary from 1973 and uh, once again here, I, I like to go to it and look up what the subject matter is going to be for the day. And we're in redemption. And it, it said for number one, the act of redeeming, number two, was the state of being redeemed. Number three, deliverance and rescue. Uh, theologically speaking, Deliverance from sin, salvation. Number five, atonement for guilt. Number six, the repurchase as for something sold. And that's where it started getting interesting. Paying off as for a mortgage bond or note. Recovery by payment as of something pledged and uh, what something preach said here just a few minutes ago uh, with age was talking about the younger generations with age comes wisdom wisdom comes from your reading and constantly studying and trying to improve yourself somebody once said that you you live as though this could be the last 
today. You must you must ask for redemption and ask the Lord and Savior to uh, to come into your life. And you must you must understand that the blood of Jesus Christ is the only way you're going to get to heaven. But you read and study as though there's no tomorrow. You never stop. The Bible is, if you don't have one, we will get you one. And it will help you in all aspects of your life. Let it be the ruling God of your faith. And we're going to start here with, we're going to turn to chapter 24 of Leviticus. No, I'm sorry, let's go to 25. We're going to forego 24 and go to 25. And I started by going to uh, verse 24, 51, and 52. But as quite often I find that in my studies, when I go to these verses and I start reading, I have to back up to get the whole context. So I'll read a couple of verses before to get get the concept of where I'm trying to go with this. Well, in this particular case, the more I read, the more I had to keep backing up, and which is okay, which is okay. It just it was very fulfilling, and so we're going to read 24 here, and in all the land of your possession, ye shall grant a redemption for the land. And then go to 51. If there be yet many years behind, according unto them, ye, he shall give again the price of his redemption out of the money that he has brought for. And if if there remain but a few years unto the years of the jubilee then he shall count with him and according to his years shall he give him again the price of his redemption all right that in, a, in itself alone uh i said well maybe i better back up and start reading and and try to get the whole picture here and where we're at in my paper keeps sliding all around here in my notes, but uh, I backed up and decided to start with verse number one in 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses at, in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune the vineyards, vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. Now, I can't help but wonder here because I, in my earlier years, I used to spend my summers down on the farm. And I remember that my uncle who had 300 acres of tobacco and soybeans and watermelons one year. And then I would see that he didn't plant anything in a particular field and he let it basically grow up. And I couldn't help but wonder then if that's what he was doing. And of course he's not here today to ask him, but there would be parcels of land out here that were not under cultivation or not under production, and he would just grow up in weeds, and then he would till it all up. Of course, they were using some herbicides and stuff too, and but it, it basically, he left it barren and didn't do anything to it, and scripturally speaking, I'm hoping that is the reason that he was doing that, not just because the county agent come in, Mr. Kendall, from Green Acres and told him he didn't need to plant nothing there this year. Uh, it's that on number five here, that which groweth of its own accord, accord of thy harvest, thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. 
You know, at this point, I'm beginning to go, not all the land, but he rotated it so that there were, this field would be barren or unproductive, but the ones around it would be growing stuff. And you would always see something pop up. There'd be some corn over here, little stubble corn. Uh, same thing with the, they didn't plant any wheat, but they did tobacco and you would see little stalks out there and basically the Lord saying, don't harvest it. And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for thee and for the servant and for the maid and for thy hired servant and for thy stranger that sojourneth with thee. And I got to start asking here, some of my elders here, I'm not exactly sure what he means by meat there. Is it, are you talking about actual meat? Like, no, it's food. Food, you know, okay. Meat, the, no. And the, like the, the meat of the wheat, you know, you take the kernel off, they call that meat, and that's why the new Bibles try okay. to change it to meat. I didn't think it was literally referring to animal protein. Well, no, it could be, you know, anything, <laughs> but they're dealing with stuff growing in the field, and... Uh, that's your new Bibles change it because they don't understand that the meat of the nut, the meat of the wheat, so they change it to meal. You know? Okay, there we go. And for thy cattle and for the beast that are in thy land shall all the increase thereof be meat. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of set of years unto the seven times seven years and the space of the seven sabbaths of the years shall be unto the 40 and nine years that's 49 years that this cycle goes on then shall thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month and the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land and ye shall hollow the 15th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land year. How the 50th year proclaim liberty throughout all the 15th yeah i'm sorry 50th 50th, 50th year 49 50, there we go, 50th year, and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that 50th year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap, that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of the vine undressed. And see, for it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. In the year of this jubilee, ye shall return every man unto his possession. And if thou sell aught unto thy neighbor or buyest aught of thy neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. According to the number of years after the jubilee shalt thou buy of thy neighbor, and according unto the number of years of the fruits he shall sell unto thee. According to the multitude of years Thou shalt increase the price thereof, and according to the fewness of years, thou shalt diminish the price of it. For according to the number of the years of the fruits doth he sell unto thee. Okay. I'm taking it here that, that God is giving Jews their... I used the term marching orders on how they are to conduct themselves. And my question is also, do they still 
adhere to these principles? I mean, do they? I don't know, really, but, you know, it's just that everything was returned. If a man sold himself into bondage, then yep. he was made free at, or set free at the end of that. Jubilee. And I'm not hearing the, the term slavery here, but as we go on, it's going to talk about bondsman and bondsmaid and slavery. Yeah. Right. And that's within their own people. If it was a stranger, they don't have to do this. They don't have to return okay. a stranger's land or free him. That was among the brethren. That is among the Jews. The Jews. Hebrews. And they're kind of wondering where, do they still adhere to these principles? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know any real, I know some Jews, but they're not practicing Jews. They're, they're heathens, most of them. <laughs> uh, you shall not, they're, therefore oppress one another but thou shalt fear thy God and I am the Lord your God wherefore ye shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them and we should all do them we have the ruling God of our faith right here and ye shall dwell in the land in safety and the land shall yield her fruit and ye shall eat your fill, and dwell therein in safety. And if ye shall say, What shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow, nor gather in our increase. Then I will command my blessings upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. And ye shall sow the eighth year, and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year, until your fruits come in, shall eat of the old store. Uh, Brother Phil and I were talking a little bit about this this morning, but uh, it basically makes sense to, trying to keep this in proper perspective here, to be prepared to have your food sources, to to plan, and it in this day and age, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So basically, be ready. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. For ye are strangers and sojourners with me, and in all the land of your possession ye shall grant a redemption for the land. And here we are with redemption again. And I'm looking down over my, my uh, random house dictionary definition of it. Would that be like paying off as for a mortgage bond or note? Yeah. And in all your land, your possession, ye shall grant a redemption for the land. That's if somebody got in trouble and they got in debt. Okay, you got your possession of your land. You do have that. Yes. You can sell your land to whoever you owe something to. But in the Jubilee, they have to give it back. They have to give it back or they can... Give it back. Sell it back. back sell it back. back. Okay. But it's, it's time for it to come back to the original one. I, I doubt very seriously because I haven't had much contact with that particular side of the family. But but my dad was from Tennessee, and they have some very unusual property rights. And me being first born of my grandmother's children, my my dad was first born. That gave me some special rights in real estate, I guess you'll say legal issues. And uh, we're not gonna dive into that, but uh, I know where, when I read this starting really yesterday, when I read, when I backed all the way up, I read some of this earlier in the week, but then when I backed up and read the whole thing, I could see where the state of Tennessee has some biblical scripture or or whenever they were writing their constitution and their laws applied, they were using the Bible, and I think some of it came from this. If thy brother be waxen poor and have sold away some of his possession 
And if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. And if the man have none to redeem it, and himself be able to redeem it, then let him count the years of the sale thereof and restore the overplus unto the man whom he sold it, that he may return unto his possession. But if he be not able to restore it to him, then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that have bought it until the year of Jubilee, and in the Jubilee shall, wait a minute, and in the Jubilee it shall go out, and he shall return unto his possession. And if a man sell a dwelling house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold. Within a full year may he redeem it. And if he redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house that is in the wall city shall be established forever to him that bought it throughout his generations. It shall not go out of it out in the Jubilee. And once again here, this is this is God giving the Jewish folks their marching orders here and how they are to structure their society. You know, in Lexington County, if you don't pay your taxes, then they can put your house up for sale or your property, and you have a year to redeem it. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you, everyone heard of that, but Lexington County can put your, hell, your, your house up for sale for lack of or non-payment of taxes, but you have a year to go back and reclaim it, and that's plus 10% or something. Plus, you have to pay interest to the person that bid on it. Yeah, you have to but pay interest. I think it's 10%. I'm not sure what it is now. I've never gotten that bad, but it, it could happen. Uh, so, but the houses of the villages which have no, whoa, 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 where am I at there? Notwithstanding the cities of the Levites and the houses of the cities of their possession, may the Levites redeem at any time. And once again here, this kind of indicates to me that the Levites being, I guess you would say the favored son here, uh, are given a special exemption. Am I reading that correctly? Or interpreting that correctly? They're the, they're the priesthood tribe, so right. yes, they get a little special deal. Well, isn't that like special? And if a man purchase of the Levites, then the house that was sold and the city of his possession shall go out in the year of Jubilee for the houses of the cities of the Levites or their possession among the children of Israel. But the, but the field of the suburbs of the cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. It is in their perpetual possession. And if thy brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt re relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with thee. Mm. Live with thee? I wouldn't work at my house very long because I'm not Jewish. <laughs> uh, probably live with me, but not with my wife. <laughs> Take thou no usury of him or increase, but fear thy God, and thy brother may live with thee, that thy brother may live with thee. Thou shalt not give him thy money unto usury, nor lend him the victuals or for increase. And I had to look up victuals just to make sure I understand it. Victuals. Victuals. Where I come from, they pronounce it victuals. <laughs> victuals. <laughs> that is nourishment that is primarily for humans. I guess it could be used for animal feed too, but that is basically people food. 
I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. And if thy brother that dwelleth by three be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant, bonds servant, but as a hired servant and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee and shall serve unto the year of Jubilee. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him and shall return unto his own family and unto the, unto the possession of his fathers shall he return. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but shalt fear thy God. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen and are round about you. <clears throat> of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. So that kind of falls back on what we were saying. It's the outsiders here that uh, what they refer to as the heathen. Like Africans. Could be. <laughs> uh, you haven't been in, in the mountains. Words, they can rent their brethren, but they can buy the other people. You slavery could rent your brother, a, but you could buy the other people. Slavery was not a sin in the Bible. Yeah. They, Men stealing was. You know, Shanghai people. Shanghai people? Yeah. Okay. Well, it, some of that is still going on today. And Lord, uh, we would love to see your wrath. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn, sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat, beget in your land, and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. But but over your your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. And if a sojourner or stranger wax rich by three, and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor, and sell himself unto a stranger or sojourner by thee or to the stock of the stranger's family. And that was where you're talking about if he sell himself. Could that be applied to someone who is working for someone else? I mean, like we're all employed by somebody else unless you were an entrepreneur. After that, he is sold but after that, he is sold. He may be redeemed again. One of his brethren may redeem him. Either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him. Or any that is nigh or kin unto him and his family may redeem him. Or if he be able, he may redeem himself. And that would recover by payment as of something pledged. And I, I'm guessing is that where would that would apply? I'm getting deep here, ain't I? <laughs> yeah. Actually, you're on the rocks. But <laughs> all right, we we we'll finish and get this underneath us here. <laughs> Try to. <laughs> And he shall reckon with him that bought him from the year that he was sold to him unto the year of Jubilee. And the price of his sale shall be according unto the number of years, according to the time of an hired servant shall be with him. 
And here we go again. If there be yet many years behind, according unto them, he shall give again the price of his redemption out of the money that he was was brought for, bought for. I said, and if there remain but few years unto the years of Jubilee, then he shall count with him, and according unto his years shall he give him again the price of his redemption. And as a yearly hired servant shall he be with him, and the other shall not rule with rigor over him in thy sight. And if he be not redeemed in these years, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, both he and his children with him. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I bought, brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And I'm hoping <laughs> that, well, I mean, it, the next chapter that I got is Numbers 349, of which I kind of wanted to indicate here. It may take me <laughs> a couple of weeks here to get in all of the verses here, especially when I get to, to the New Testament, where we deal a little, a little bit more with some of the first part of the act of redeeming. But uh, I do see where this kind of affected some of the lawmakers in early Tennessee, where my family came from, my daddy's family, uh, because I got involved in some legal real estate issues some years ago. And I was going, where did that come from? It had to be biblical. Uh, but we will pick up with Numbers 349 next week, and I am going to... Chapter 3, verse 49. Chapter 3, verse 49. They won't find the 349 chapter in there. No. <laughs> Numbers 3, verse 49. Let me clarify that. Also, Dale, as far as the Levites go, once you keep reading on into when you get into the book of Joshua, the Levites did not have a set land, area of land where the tribe of Levi was established. All the other ones did. Levites were scattered all over Israel in groups and they were given cities and little counties and all that within you know the tribes areas. Weren't so they also them, that made them different? from the original tribes that they were assigned to. Weren't they also the keepers of the, the Ark of the Covenant? Didn't yeah, they? The yeah, the priest. The they, yeah. And remember, in everything you do, preach Jesus, and if you have to, use words. When the tribes received their inheritance on the land, the Levites' inheritance was the Lord. <clears throat> The whole thing on the law of redemption is for the people of Israel, you had to be a near kinsman. And so how does that relate to our redemption in Jesus Christ? Well, in the book of James, the Bible says, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. So in order for God to redeem us, we sold ourselves into slavery, you know, to the devil. And when Adam sinned in the garden and to redeem us, to buy us back, it had to take sinless blood. The only one that had sinless blood is God. Amen. So in order to redeem us, he had to engraft, be engrafted into the human race. And that's what he did by the virgin birth of Mary. And then he was able to buy us back from our depraved condition through his own precious blood. Amen. And uh, that that's the law of redemption. And that's what we're where you were reading in there today, uh, dealing with Israel and and that law of redemption and who could redeem them. And the only one that could redeem us is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
yeah. is God. Uh, we could not redeem ourselves. We were too poor to do it. We didn't have the what it took to pay the price. And so that's where the redemption comes in. He bought us back from, from uh, the devil if you'll receive him as your Savior. Amen. So that's where we're at. And the book of redemption, Old Testament, is the book of Ruth. Yeah, that's, that's a good, good book, book for redemption. redemption. You can go back and read the book of Ruth. That'll help you. Dismiss us there, James. We'll take a break and come back in about 10. Thank you, Paul, for your message this morning, Paul. We may apply it to our lives. Paul, continue to instruct us today, Paul, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.